Hi, my name is Chris Dancy, and I'm known as the world's most connected person. By 2009, I digitized all of my medical records, and then uh, I had my first wearable in 2011. By 2012, I had more wearables, and I was quantifying more things in my environment. By 2012, I got into genetics um, and microbiomes and blood and those types of lab results. I got really into like what I could measure inside. I consider myself like a cyborg anthropologist. Ah! Ah! Come on! Oh no! Welcome to my house. Come on in. I'd like to show you around. Welcome to Fantasy Island. This shelf is really a bunch of um, uh, sensors that are redundant and or help me with things that I don't n normally need at the drop of a hat. This is a tricorder fired by Star Trek. So the idea is instead of, you know, uh, taking temperature and blood pressure and, and, and uh, blood oxygen and all the other things you'd measure, this one sensor could just, like a, like a tricorder in Star Trek, you just click it and it does the measurement and sends the information to your phone. It's that quick. And this pill actually uses this sensor. And the way it works is you take one of these disposable patches, you place the patch on your side, you then swallow the pill with the sensor in it, and it collects the data as it goes through your body, sends it to the patch, and the patch syncs with your phone and sends the data to your phone. So this, was a, this is a, has a little sensor in it, and you wear it around your waist. I love things you can't see. And then when, it, like, you couldn't see my respiration sensor. Uh, and then when it's underneath you, if you start to lean or slouch, it vibrates. So what's great about the uh, capture is it records everything that's being said. So unbeknownst to your friends, like if you're a journalist or something, you just carry it through and it records. And if there's something you really like, you just double tap on it, and it saved that last 30 seconds of what was said. The interface used to be the keyboard. Then in the interface was the mouse. Then the interface was the screen. Then the interface was the voice. Now the interface is the body. And next the interface will be the environment. So now we're in my living room, and I think it's really important for me that technology is always invisible, so you don't see it. So most people, when they enter my home, they don't notice all the things that are happening around them. So each light bulb is actually connected to the internet individually. So each one has a MAC address, just like your computer or your cell phone. And because they're LED, they can be any color I want. The room in the whole house is connected um, uh, by a smart thermostat, and the smart thermostat can know when I'm not at home or home and adjust the temperature accordingly. So sometimes it's good if you got guests coming to visit you that you're not fond of, and you want them to leave, you slowly raise the temperature. How many sensors? Oh my gosh. In your house? <laughs> not anymore. I mean, when I first started, it was really easy because I counted between the things I wore and the things I used on my phone, little applications or programs on my computer, or services I paid to manage those things. It used to be, like in 2008, like 700 or 1,000. But like when I checked recently, maybe in 2014, I mean, it was like 20,000 things measuring everything. When I created the system that defined the different types of data. So soft data was anything I would do online that other people could see. So soft data, like it was probably a lie. Core data is the, the, the blood, the genetics, the brain waves. Those are things that are proof that what you're doing in the hard data and the soft data layer are working. So what started out to be a weight loss project really became, could I make myself a superhuman project uh, without putting chips in my body or eating special diet? Could I just start to engineer myself to be kinder, to be slower, uh, to be able to give people empathy, to make them feel loved uh, in a way that was supported by technology and influenced by these systems, but not controlled or dictated by it. So this is the bedroom. It's a kind of a very spacious room. Next to my bed, I've got my uh, uh, se sleep sensor. So this one measures uh, the sound when I'm sleeping and then uh, movement in the bed with something called a pillow uh, tag that connects to the pillow. Then the next thing I do is check my blood pressure. <laughs> I like the idea of creating a therapeutic that works in concert with your, the friends in your life, the devices in your life, the environments in your life, to help slowly guide you back to a place where there's peace of mind and health. Because so often technology distracts you to the next thing. 
So in here, it's just a regular, regular looking bathroom. This is another uh, Alexa. And she's good for if I'm in a shower and I forget something, I just yell at her and tell her to tell me something. Uh, this digital scale over in that corner. So that scale is Wi-Fi. So it, when I weigh myself, that weight goes to my system. My doctors don't, I don't let my doctors have access to any of the health information like my heart rate. I don't let them measure it, I measure it. And then I give them the screenshots. So if they wanna know how I'm sleeping or they wanna know my body temperature or how much I'm walking or running. Oh, that's, the mic is moving too much. Now we'll do a little EKG to see if we move the heart at all. If I meditate uh, three times on morning, afternoon, and evening, 20 minutes, and then exercise for one hour. So this is my office. This is where I work. This is where the magic happens, yeah. Um, so in here I can come in, I can just go to Chris Quantified Self. So this will show me uh, today, I spent most of my time in Quicken uh, on my bank, uh, on my bank's website, on my bank's mobile app and business stuff. So you can obviously tell I was paying bills this morning. So I've been super, super active. Most of my, my time, most of my calories uh, uh, were, were, were well tracked. Um, I was pretty productive. You could see I spent a lot of unproductive time on my computer, like surfing the internet. Right, so it all goes to my Google Calendar or it all goes to uh, the data.chrisdancy.com platform that we saw earlier. Automatically, yeah. One of the things I'm really studying for 2016 is the nature of time. Because I want to actually want to create uh, a data time machine. So I want to be able to, to collect enough information and be able to order it and display it so that you could create an environment like a room with enough sensors and feedback loops to actually change the perception of time for someone. We could say, this we can measure. We could use light and our, uh, an instrument to say, no, that's quantifiably red. So how do you move from mental qualia, something you can't see that it's red, to something where you physically can see it's red? So what I've been working on is a system to actually map data to uh, cognitive qualia, to try to figure out what data would need to be present and then re-represented to actually believe that it, this room was red all of a sudden. Shuffling songs by Madonna. <laughs> Um, and I eat a lot of foods, um, like most people that are similar, but all my foods I've already scanned. So on my phone, inside my food diary, all these things are already there. Scan. And it tells me what the muffin is. So you can see my, my breakfast from this morning has already been logged. This morning I had orange juice my uh, omega oil, uh, my English muffin. When I'm abroad, it's a lot harder, um, partially because, um, you know, I can't control everything. So what I have to do then is I just have to take more time to, like, just get things done. Um, now, if I'm on just a vacation, like, I'll always take some time. It's almost like a, a data cheat day where, like, I just don't want to do anything. My last trip to Paris, Two weeks ago, I didn't log for two weeks. Because right now, every relationship I have is mediated through this device. I don't have a friend in the world who doesn't come through this device. They all do. It's the new door. Knock, knock, knock. Oh, you need me? Knock, knock, knock. You want me? Knock, knock, knock. This is what I'm seeing. This becomes the mediator, and then this becomes the mediator. We create new ways to let people in or block them. And I think it's just a dangerous, dangerous precedent we're setting because in 10 years, children won't have a choice on how technology controls their friendships. Oh boy, that's your bone. See, that's my bone. Sorry. For the next four years, I'll definitely be actively tracking and watching technology and understanding how it's affecting me and the world around me. I don't think I'll be doing it much beyond that. Five years ago, everything I owned fit in one bedroom and fit in a box. And today, my life is huge. 
Four years ago, I didn't recognize my body. Three years ago, I, I don't recognize my mind. Two years ago, I don't recognize my heart. So systematically, I'm changing both inside and outside faster than I can even keep up with anymore. Obviously, I'll hit some type of plateau. There's only so much you can learn. There's only so much you can do. That's why the spirituality is really important to me. But, you know, eventually I'd like to run for political office uh, of some sort. I would love to influence policy as it relates to technology. I think we need leadership in the world that understands the importance of what technology can do. Thank you.